Well, hello, hello, and welcome. I'm AJ O'Neill, and I do a little bit of repair every now and then. So I'm going to just tell you really quickly, I bought this GameCube. The controller ports weren't working. I'm going to show you what was wrong and how you can fix it yourself if you've got the same problem. So, uh, first of all, what I did was I have another GameCube. I recommend you do this if you can. Obviously, you may not have the option, but so I got this other GameCube right here. What I did is I took them both apart. I swapped the controller. Well, first, first, I tested the controller. I just swapped a different controller, made sure that it wasn't the controller. It was port one wasn't working on, on this one uh, over here. Second thing I did was I took this GameCube apart. I took its controller ports and I plugged it in. That worked. And so I knew that there was a problem here. And I'm going to show you exactly what it was in just a second. Then I plugged in the original controller ports uh, with the ribbon cable. So let me show you here. There's a ribbon cable on, on there. It's very, very easy. I'll just open this up so you can see here. It's very, very easy to access the ribbon cable. Uh, this, let's see. So you, you just push this forward like that. And then there's a ribbon cable. You can see it right there. My thumb's right by it, right there. And it pulls out nice and easy. It's not a problem at all. Um, so I just pushed it back in. I thought, well, maybe it's just a bad connection and unplugging it, plugging is all that needed. No, that was not the case. But let me show you. Oh, hold on. Got something to get out of the way there. So let me show you what it was. First of all, there was two problems. Well, there appeared to be two problems. I, uh, I tried two things and I got a solution. One was I noticed what seemed to be cracks. Can I zoom in any further on this? No, that's all I can zoom in. I noticed what appeared to be cracks on the ribbon cable. And that made me a little bit concerned. It looked like the solder had gotten dry and brittle. I mean, the solder is dry, but gotten kind of oxidized and brittle and, and was cracking along the ribbon cable. So I got my soldering iron hot and I just dragged down and reflow those well and I test them with my multimeter I uh, in my in my kit in the links I've got very fine probes on the multimeter let me show you uh, you I mean you can't see them very well I'm gonna hold them up to my face so you can see just how small they are they're very very tiny probes so this makes it they they're only about half the size of these traces the very tips of them and they're insulated all the way down to the tips so they don't bump into other things so I tested it and, and, and made sure that indeed I wasn't getting a connection between the part that was in the board and the part that was on the ribbon cable. So that's one problem. Now the other problem that I had was, let's see if I can go over here. Um, oh no, we can, we can do that from this one I think actually. Let me go back to this one. So the other problem I had was I looked a little closely and I could actually see that in between, well, and let me, I can't get my hand there, but you see there's these six points of contact plus the pins, or it's not really pins, but, but this is what actually holds the controller port to the board on the other side. So if we're looking right here, so there's the port and then what's holding it together, whoops, is these four things hold it onto the board. And then these six are the connections, and you can see there's some test points here. So I used my multimeter, and I could see that between touching the tip of the pin and some of these connections, it wasn't uh, it, it wasn't beeping when I put it in continuity mode, so that there was no connection between them. And I could visibly see there was cracks around the solder. It was like a full circle of cracks around the solder. So what I think had happened, I don't know if it was because of the stress of just hundreds of times of plugging in and unplugging or you know the cable being jerked or I think what's more likely is that it just fell boom hard while one controller was plugged in and it cracked the solder on the board so what I ended up doing and I'll link to the previous video is an hour long where I was going through this in real time and experimenting with it but what I ended up doing was taking some Kimwick and desoldering. So I just put my iron on there with the, the wick. You could use gut wick and just coat it with flux. I like Kim wick because it's pre-coated with flux. That works really fast and really well. 
but I, I sucked off the old solder. I got my tip wet, sucked off the old solder, and then I put down some good lead solder. Lead solder is less brittle. It's more flexible. It's going to last longer. It's just better all around. Anybody who's doing repair is going to be using lead solder because it's more reliable. They use the crappy solder in production because, you know, environment and all that. But anyway, so I re-soldered all six of these plus these four, took all the solder off, put the solder on, and then... I, I reflowed the solder on these and I, I used some of the Kimwick to make sure that where I'd bridge the connections, meaning that solder had gone between between two connections or three connections, that I'd cleaned that up and wicked it away, used my multimeter to make sure, you know, so I'd put I'd put my multi my probe on say one of these and then I'd test on either side as well. So I'd test put it on one connection, test three connections, and I just moved along, moved along, moved along, did that to make sure there's no bridges. I did find that I, I'd missed a spot. I went back and fixed it. Same thing over here. Uh, you know, I I got these two connected together by mistake. I just put some Kimwick on it, pulled that off, then put a little bit extra uh, on, again, on the one where I'd taken a little too much off. That's all I had to do. And then I went ahead and touched up the other ones as well because I did see on one other port uh, one of them, I think it was that one right there, it had also cracked. And so I went and I touched them all up and then I plugged it back in. Everything worked. So if you have the, you know, if you want to see the technique that I use again, it's an hour long because I'm, you know, I'm just kind of going through and doing a little trial and error, using my multimeter. I'm testing everything. I'm figuring it out. Um, so it, maybe it was only 45 minutes long, but it's something like that. But I'll, I'll link that down in the doobly-doo, so you can check that out if you want. If this was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, give it a thumbs down. Don't come back. Don't need you. No, just kidding. Um, no, no, actually not kidding. Anyway, so uh, if you've got any questions, um, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. I'll help you the best I can. And... Uh, yeah, I, I, I wish you well. But, uh, oh, actually, one more thing, or a couple more things before I go. So I, I just want to kind of explain the process here. So this is a very simple board. I want to show you the other side of it. I think that's why I had this picture up. So you can see here, the only thing that's on this board, there's a resistor, there's an LED, there's a battery, and then there are connection ports. So you'd be able to look inside, you use your phone flashlight or whatever, you'd be able to look inside to see if, you know, somebody spilled some orange juice in there or something and the copper uh, plating got corroded, turned green or something like that. If that just needed to be scraped off, you'd see it. Or if it was broken, you know, really broken, you'd see it. You know, you can look in there and you can kind of see if one of the pins is bent way out of whack. You'd be able to see that, you know, it'd be bunched up, uh, bunched up in the back there rather than being laying flat. Um, but those are the kind of things that, uh, you know, if the resistor's not black, which I don't know why it would be. I mean, you know, if the LED turns on when you turn on the power, it's, and, and that shouldn't affect the, the controllers anyway. But if one of those two things was messed up, probably something more serious happened. But uh, my, my point is, and, and there's a switch on here, and then there's ribbon ca cable. So the only thing that go wrong here is that this could somehow get severely scratched, or the solder gets brittle and dry and cracks, there's not a lot that, that can go wrong. So if you can find a replacement port and the replacement port works, then you know that likely what's wrong is either the ribbon cable is uh, disconnected, it's cracked, uh, it could be sliced somewhere along. I think that's pretty unlikely, but the most likely thing is gonna be that it's gotten brittle and it's cracked. So you just wanna you know, get out a magnifying glass if you got to and just inspect all these little points and then your multimeter is your friend you just want to test, you know, let me pull up again. So, you know, if you can touch the tip, if you see something that looks a little suspicious, if the solder's sunken in or it looks cracked and you can touch the tip with your multimeter over here and you can touch one of the test points over here, oh, I'm trying to make my mouse big there. Um, if it, you know, if you put it in continuity mode, beep mode and it beeps, you know, it's connected. If it's kind of sometimes beeping, sometimes not, it might be the solder's cracked. So that's kind of the process that I used to go through it. I hope that helps you. You have an excellent night or day or whatever it is, wherever you are. Adios. Oh, thumbs up if you got them, all that. Uh, check down in the doobly-doo for related and unrelated links, kits to the kind of stuff that I uh, that I use for my soldering and whatnot. And, uh, well, that's all.